Welcome to CTV Sports and the 11th game of the World Pro League 2024 Palm Beach Open, where we have Maltese Falcons going up against Park Place. And today we're coming from the beautiful Park Place. This field, just to remind you, runs from north to south. We've got a, a slight wind out there, 20 to 25 miles an hour coming from the east. Uh, and uh, 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, beautiful uh, shot there of the Park Place Polo Farm today as we'll be playing our 11th game here of the World Polo League 2024 Palm Beach Open. Looks like our, our team's out there getting their final. You can see the wind. It's going to be gusting today, and It's going to uh, blow from the east. So, like I said, it's not going to affect uh, the players running from goal to goal, but it will have a, have a lot doing the penalty shots. Definitely those penalty shots are going to have to adjust. As uh, you can see, actually, that camera is on the west side. Our center cam is uh, in the beautiful stadium at Park Place Polo Farm. And uh, we have some changes uh, on some of the teams. You want to go through the lineups here again one more time? I'd be delighted to. Let's start with the uh, the team in the red shirts, the Maltese Falcons. We've got the young uh, and very talented Mia Cambiasso at number one. Uh, she's there just on the left of your screen. And we'll go straight to number four, because that is uh, her dad, Adolfo Cambiasso, playing the number four position. At number three, Peque Gonzalez playing off seven goals. And normally you'd see him at back, but today with the number two on his shirt, Alejandro Navizio Estrada. In the blue, we have Park Place, led by Andre Borodin at the number one position. Joaquin Pinello at number two, coming in of six goals. And then, of course, Juan Britos, the nine goaler at number three. And Hilario Ujoa, man, on the ball as I speak here, coming in off uh, 10 goals, of course. And just to remind you that in this uh, pairing, the, as Dale was saying, the 11th game, uh, the Maltese Falcons, they've already had uh, a couple of games on their belt. They uh, beat Kaya Polo 11 goals to nine, lost to Pilot, same score, but reversed nine goals to 11. So they're coming into this game with a one and one. And Park Place, they lost their opening match to Casablanca. So they're 0 and one, which of course Dale would imagine uh, would mean that Park Place are gonna go out there all guns blazing, looking for their first win. Okay, it looks like a uh, little, little change on the, on the numbers here. Yeah, it looks like uh, Pinello's gonna wear the number four. Yeah, and they've kind of switched it up on us a little bit. Thank you. So we're going to put Lario at the number three. And that'll put Britos at the number two. Thank you. A little change on the Park Place team as they've had a couple. And like you said, we've had some changes. Unlimited substitution. Always uh, here in the World Polo League. And we get our first right away violation error. Uh, Andre in a good spot. And uh, they move that ball down. Remember, we do have the challenge system in place. Each team will receive one challenge per half. You need to use it or lose it. Triggers are in place also. Um, teams can challenge any call. And also they can challenge ball placements. Uh, we have the triggers in place. It checks if the goal is scored. Any ball goes out of bounds. Anytime you have... Anybody come together, either four-legged out there, two-legged out there, on a tight play, any kind of physical play, they can check. And, of course, the umpire trigger, or if the umpires disagree on a the call, they'll send that into our third man slash IRO, instant replay official. And uh, these uh, challenge system, very similar to a lot of the sports today, how they use it. Kind of changes a little bit in basketball, uh, in football i think hockey now i'm pretty sure they check all the goals also i think in hockey i think hockey and soccer i believe they check all yep. the goals yep. and then every sport has their their own little difference how they add they use it okay so uh oh early challenge we screw word matrix Early challenge, but a ball placement challenge. Yeah. So, you know, I was just about to ask that. Yeah, yeah. They thought they should get a three. And uh, so they had, that's why we took a little time. Remember, the IRO, Instant Replay Fisher, will take his time. Uh, minimum 30 seconds, but it might push it to a minute, always to check all the angles of the camera because you have the end zone camera, you have the drone flying, of course, our center cam. So they are, they're going to lose their challenge. It is going to be a four. So it'll be Ujoa. From the 60-yard mark, Alario. Mm. 
Mm. Not quite what he would hope for, I would imagine. Wanting to extend their lead. Remember, they've been given a goal on handicap. Park place coming in off 25 for Falcons in off 26. A little, little, little bitty chestnut Mary's riding there, Lario looks like. And I'm sure she can scamper, though. Here we go. On the knock in quickly. They're going to get Peke running forward. And it's going to be Gonzalez. Out to the left-hand side. He takes the ball. Nicely done. Checks up. That's one player in front of him. Yeah, deciding to play it around the outside. Looking for Cambiasso. It'll be the younger of the two, Mia. Yeah, she got a touch. But look at that. The number two here. Burritos and Joaquin Pinello shutting down the back door firmly. But uh, the Falcons, yeah, well, there he comes. Which is waiting for him to make his first appearance. But it looks like he might have just come a little bit too late. Let's have a look at the replay. Yeah, nice to see the man in the green helmet. When I say that, that's Juan Britos. As he has been playing also for Park Place, another league. But nice to see him here playing in the World Polo League. Turns around here. And ball's still going across the, still going across the field a little bit. Dolph will trying to get in there quickly. So we'll have a right away violation. Penalty 5A, Alario. Quickly taken. Pretty uh, straightforward uh, case here for the uh, two mounted officials on the field. And back to you, we were just talking about the man with the, uh, the green helmet. Number two in the shirt, Britos, but that ball is going to be picked up nicely now. Oh, no, it's not. It's going to be stolen back by Park Place. And Pinello will take this uh, downfield. He's got uh, Mia Cambiasso in hot pursuit. What's he going to do? He's going to check. Fakes the shot. Alejandro overrides. Left behind. Picked up on the near side. But there was a man coming down the line. Picky Gonzalez. Umpire. Well, it might be that late whistle exactly for that reason. So after the 5A, we get a positive possession here by Park Place. They get Pinello going forward. You'll see that rotation from Andre and Joaquin. They will switch positions. The ball's still going up and down the field. And then you have players coming from either side there. And so an easy uh, call here. You either go meaning on the near side. Adolfo had the offside. And uh, so they're going to go with the penalty 5 uh, a, and you can actually even have Peke came in front of Peke. So a couple fouls in there. They go yeah. with the first foul always. So apparently 5A for Maltese Falcons. And again, very quickly taken. Takes it uh, deep down into the half of Park Place. But uh, Pinello, with the number four in his shirt, he, of course, is responsible for the uh, defense and feeding those balls back upfield. Here we go then, just uh, allowing that little cluster of players to decluster itself. But still, Pinello. Yeah, sends it out to the left-hand side. Everybody in hot pursuit as they go to that halfway line. Picked up now by Ujoa. Nice bit of blocking there to try and clear the way by the number two per Britos. Left it behind. Picked up by Ujoa. He's got a man out on his left there. On top of your screen. That will be picked up by the number two. Juan Britos, again, Peque Gonzalez doing well to just allow the space. Now the pass finally coming through. Little deflection, and it'll be picked up by Adolfo Cambiasso. Yeah, cleverly outplayed there, Andre Borodin. Again, nice little pass out to Alejandro Novijo Estrada. Normally playing the number four position. I'm sure, as you were saying, Dale, we'll see that rotation. Uh, with the Maltese Falcons work a lot and Alejandro Nevisio Estrada, whether he plays with the number four or the number two in his back, doesn't really make no difference. Such a solid play. And here we are on the break then. Peque Gonzalez uh, just slightly ahead there of Juan Britos. Gonzalez slightly unlucky on that finishing touch. Oh, bad luck. Yeah, Peque gets his first run. Yeah, you can see he's kind of, oh, he wanted that one in. And uh, Fields course looked like a pool table today and i'll tell you send us to our courtesy change but no, no nice run and that's what they want to do they want to get peke pulling a team peke played a lot of polo with adolfo um with the valiente team back in the day so they know each other very well he'll use peke in the front power polo ponies of course mariano his father gonzalez and daniel his his grandfather uh argentine open winner tango player you know there's uh family bills so they uh <clears throat> They'll use him in the front. Dolph will get him moving, pulling the team, and then you'll be you'll see that rotation with Mia and then uh, and Alejandro. So it's it, 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 kind of like the Maltese Falcons lineup today. And then what can you say when you put uh, 
uh, Andre, Juan, uh, Juan Britos, and, and Ilario Ujoa together. They played um, so many years together. They know each other at a high level. And then Joaquin Pinello, of course, always uh, playing cellar polo this season. And, uh, well, the whole family. We've been talking about the Pinello boys. Yeah, you went through the yeah. whole list. The yeah, others. Esteban, of course, father. Esteban, and uh, always watching the games, always tuning into CTV Sports, checking his house. So shout out to him and uh, Argentina. But the boys are all doing well, from the uh, from the youngest to the oldest. So they all they all they all are into the games. Nice to see that. And a uh, little courtesy change here, and it looks like a uh, little team meeting here by Park Place. You can see the grandstand there in the back, mm -hmm. right here. Um, beautiful, beautiful place. The uh, Park Place Polo Farm. And uh, looks like uh, well, we're taking a little more time for Park Place. They're actually down on the far end today. And uh, that ball was at the far south end when they called the courtesy change. So we'll have a knock-in coming for Park Place. And still, as you said, Dale, a good uh, three and a half minutes remaining in this, the first of our six chuckers. And remember, we've got a double header for you on today. Right after this game, this afternoon, Audi taking on Traviesa. So make sure you uh, make an afternoon with us here on CTV Sports. Now then, back to Park Place. And the man with the green helmet, Juan Burritos, looking for Panello. Gets shut down very quickly there by Gonzalez. Left behind for Cambiasso. Deflection coming off the pony there of uh, the number four, Panello. And uh, that might just be a little bit of a break for Park Place. They get possession. Left now for uh, Hilario Ujoa. Yeah, trying to send that one straight down the middle. And what a perfect pass as uh, Alejandro Navijo Estrada came in to try and stop that one. But again, Cambiasso turning things around very nicely. And, uh, well, you saw him coming from left to right there, cutting across the right-of-way of Ujoa. Dolpho, look for Alejandro here. See where that ball, uh, Dolpho controls it here. See where that ball passes. Yeah, you're going to see how that ball passed. Alejandro come from left to right. I just wanted to see where that ball passed. Delario passes him on the right side there. So he needs a little more space yeah. just so he can get out in front. Um, 5A, Ujoa. Yeah, slightly out to the left-hand side. Well, that's a good pass. And there was the open backhand coming from uh, Britos. Mia getting stuck into the, uh, the defensive line up there. Yeah, a little bit of space must be allowed, but uh, Cambiasso, well, if you don't want it, mate, he's probably thinking, I'll take it with me. So here we go then. Adolfo gets that ball back. Hammers one across the field. Looking for Mia. Read it well. Good first touch. Is she going to send it back? Well, she was looking for uh, Gonzalez. Unfortunately, he couldn't pick it up. So Park Place have possession once again. Ujoa. Out to the right-hand side this time, looking for Borodin. Solid first touch from Andre. Now then, can he take it all the way before uh, Alejandro? Well, he topped that ball. A little bit unlucky, but a little bit too late there for uh, Britos to pick it up. But maybe he'll have a chance. Panello again leaves it for Britos. Everybody coming in now for, to try and steal the ball. It's still Panello. Surrounded there by a, a trilogy of red shirts. The inside backhand, that won't go very far. Picked up once again by Britos. Gonzalez comes in. There was a little rub there, Dale. Mm -hmm. Oh, you called it, yeah. So now we'll see who creates the danger as they come together. Backed up by Adolfo. Picked up by Juan. And they come together right there. And we'll see which direction they decide to to uh, place this one. Looked like Juan Brito's had the ball. Yep. And then he kind of, there's Juan right there. But he kind of gave it up, almost like well, that Pinel, or, uh, that Peke was coming in from behind. Um, they're going to change. Juan's going to change again. Remember, we do have the courtesy, uh, courtesy change in place. 
A player could change their horses at any time. To any new viewers out there, that's something you'll see. Yeah, riding in from behind will be the call. So a good call here. We will switch directions after every goal for any of our new viewers. And, of course, any time that I change your horses, they can change. They just cannot take time out for it as Juan's doing it during the penalty shot. It's going to be Ujoa with the 40-yard penalty three. My mistake. Mm -hmm. A little skip of the pony there, but no problem for Lario. So, two goals to nil then. Remember that one goal on handicap uh, given. And uh, Hilario Ujo picking up his first penalty three. So, under a minute left to play. Here we go then. On the halfway line, as you were saying, Dale. For those of you who've uh, never tuned in before CTV Sports, after every goal is scored, they change ends, and away we go on the boards. And the man who just picked up that goal once again has possession for Park Place. And uh, remember, Park Place uh, losing their opening match here in the Palm Beach Open to Casablanca just by one goal. They are going to, uh, I'm sure, do everything they can to get home their first victory, uh, victory and the Maltese Falcons. Also with a one and one so far, we'll be looking to make it to two and one today. So I think we're gonna we're in for a very exciting game of polo here. Yeah, they're gonna both go for it today. Here they need to get these uh, wins. That's gonna take us out of our first shucker. We are gonna have a whistle there right at the end. Ten seconds left. We'll let the umpires figure this one out, and uh, we'll be right back. So stay with us here on CTV Sports. Welcome back to CTV Sports. I'm Dale Schweitz. I'm um, Jan Eric Frank. A very good afternoon to you. And a good shot there, uh, Pekka Gonzalez, as they get ready to go here. 2024 World Pole League Palm Beach Open. Maltese Falcons in the red jerseys going up against Park Place. Grand Champions Polo Club. We are at the Park Place uh, Polo Farm here in Wellington, Florida. Continuing action of the Palm Beach Open. Mia Cambiaso playing the number one, Alejandro Nui Estrada playing the number two, Pecky Gonzalez playing the three, and Adolfo Cambiaso playing the number four for the Maltese Falcons in red. Uh, Park Place in the blue, Andre Bornin playing the number one, uh, Juan Britos playing the two, Alario Ujoa playing the number three, and then Joaquin Pinello playing the number four. One goal in handicap, 25-goal team, Park Place. And one goal by Alario for the penalty line. And here we stand, Yan, 2-0. to zero. We do indeed. And uh, Mia Cambiasa just firing off a shot on goal there. And very unlucky not to get it uh, through the uprights. And once again, you've got to give it up to Park Place, doing a very good job 
also when it comes to their uh, their defensive play have uh, not really given the Maltese Falcons too much uh, to shoot at. Left behind, nicely teed up there by Ujoa. He was looking for Britos. Britos immediately had Pepe Gonzalez on his hip. Turned around again by Mia Cambiasa. She's on the boards, trying to just outplay Britos. Alejandro will leave it for Adolfo. And Adolfo <clears throat> will send that one again deep into Park Place's half. And he's found Mia. Solid first touch from Mia. Gets pushed out of the, uh, the play there by Ujoa. And he will clear it. Also, uh, Borodin coming back there as a second man on that two-man defensive line. And Britos gives it back to Ujoa. Ujoa, parallel to the boards, gets hooked by Cambiasso, timed it just right. And he will stop and turn. But uh, this is what he give. you've got to give it up to Park Place. Yeah, Andre, get in there, making yeah. uh, try, trying to, you know, put himself in between Adolfo and Juan, give them a little space to work. Under the next shot, nicely done. Deep, deep next shot. Lit. Oh, hang on. He might just get there. He's going to go for the man first and push Alejandro out of the way. All, of course, within the legalities of the game. But, uh, yeah, an old chestnut, especially at this level, Dale. If you snooze, you're going to lose the ball. And uh, broken play coming up here. Adolfo yeah, trying to send it back further into... Uh, down the line or down the half and this time it was the number two Britos coming across that right away by Adolfo. All right, so you're going to get a right away violation here. Let's keep an eye on it. Quick line change. Comes across the field here. Wow. Interesting. Uh, one of those uh, spinners as we say. So you, might, you might see a challenger somewhere here. We'll see if they decide to look at it but Sometimes, remember, you get that kind of spin. There's a back shot there. Well, we see no back shots there, but don't have to look at it slow down to see. I think you are going to get a challenge here. It looks like the umpires are talking to the uh, players there. It looks like Britos was coming on it. Dolph was coming the other way. So, you know, lesser angle is going to be the call here. And um, and quick line change, where we talk a lot about sometimes you will get a, a change in the, in the, uh, the line. Oh, yeah. Yeah, as you said, Park Place already lost their challenge, so they can't challenge. Um, so they, 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 won't, they won't have an opportunity to challenge anyways. But uh, that would have been, been a fun one to look at just because uh, it was a tail shot by Alario. And that's one of those ones that will hit the ground and kind of kind of spin the other way. Dolphin Jump did jump on it, though. So, you know, it's one of those ones uh, will stand. It will be a right-of-way violation. <clears throat> Penalty 5A for Dolphin. He drills another one downfield again. Oh, no, I was going to say intercepted by Ujoa. A little under the next shot. Now Ujoa will get a chance to uh, walk it or work it down the boards initially. Ujoa looking for uh, a little gap. Gonzalez must allow him to make the play. And that is a perfect pass. Look at this. Britos. Uh, and he's got uh, borrowed it in his sights. Yeah, well done, Andre. Good first touch, good second touch, and all good things come in threes, I was going to say. And then just that last shot, evading him. Unlucky, but good. good. power pull. Yeah. yeah. And they had, they had, they had the uh, wand waited just enough time because they had to keep Adolfo kind of you know, staying. And then Adolfo just decided, okay, I'm going to fall in behind. It's bad luck for Andre, but here comes Alejandro. Oh, and he also missed the ball, and so did the number four, Pinello. Well, everybody's just going through a little bit of a rough phase, and this will be our first Remington of the day. Mm. I tried that, like said, yeah, a little bad luck for like, uh, both teams. Yeah. And uh, as a, I believe right on the other side there, I think is the uh, Tankwa Polo Farm. I think around the other side of those uh, hedge line there, there's next to the park place, pull a farm. Courtesy change coming, 350. Remember uh, today also, not just with our challenge system in place,
But we also have the two-point conversion that's in place. Anything, uh, anybody who hits the ball from behind the line, it cannot be on the line. And a good shot of Mia Cambiasso. Mia going horse to horse there, very quick. Um, the <clears throat> We have the two-point guards and we have the buzzer beater in line. So if you hit the ball before the second horn uh, rings, then and the ball is still traveling or carrying, and it does go through the goal, will be a goal. If it carries off the field, it will be a knock-in. Good shot of Adolfo. Cambiasso. And uh, had a little uh, chat there with the team, his crew, pit crew, making sure everybody's uh, organized down there. Ujoa getting ready for a knock-in, Lario. And, um, well, very good uh, Park Plate uh, winning Founders Cup. So, so congratulations on their first, uh, that was their first World Pole League. Tournament, yeah. I believe. Yeah. So congratulations, Andre and the Park Place team. <clears throat> and uh, going for this one, this one uh, set up. Love the way tournament committee's been setting up all the different tournaments. And we had the two brackets of three. And they play uh, they play a cross bracket, the two brackets of three. So, um, and then we have one bracket of four which will play inside that bracket. That's bracket three. That's Senfest, Travieso, Aston Valley, and Audi. That's to be our afternoon game. What do you think about that? Yeah. Dale, the, all the games um, since, uh, since the first uh, tournament, we started obviously back in February. Uh, the All-Star Challenge, the Founders' Cup, and, and also, of course, no exception here, the Palm Beach Open. Um, I don't know how you've been seeing it, but for me, it's, it's just taking uh, the level of play uh, which has always been at a very high level, the highest outside uh, of Argentina or anywhere on, uh, in the world. But I think even this year, it just seems that they've actually raised the bar even more. Yeah, it always seems to raise. The bar goes up every, every, every year. And uh, congratulations to the teams, the sponsors. Um, we're probably, it's been a lot, yeah, it's been every game. Like you said, we look and we try to break them down. Uh, before the game, then it's just been so tough to uh, you just got to get to the game and watch them and figure it out. Remember, we'll have our halftime stats for you. Here we go. Alejandro, he's going to go for it. Uh, he left that for, yeah, he left that. Uh, Cabiasa left that for Alejandro. He was in a slightly better position to take a shot. I think uh, Adolfo was considering or contemplating doing the same, but that is why he is what he is if there's a man who's in a better position to take a shot from goal or two goal from distance and alejandro as we know is a very very good long distance shooter but uh, to no avail as park place have possession once again ujoa leaving it for panello panello now what's he going to do he's going to fire one downfield uh, has a bit of uh, as you say backspin there ritos not able to reach it alejandro will get a touch gonzalez will pick it up and he will leave it this time for Adolfo. Now, can he shake off uh, Britos? Still Adolfo. And this is where the horsepower is so important. Well, why not indeed? And Adolfo Cambiasso will pick up the first goal for the Maltese Falcons. Yeah, Golasso, Adolfo. Works to, oh, actually a little miss hit to the inside. And then he waits, finds the outside, and then goes right for it. Might have went that way on purpose to set up. Kind of looked like to me like he was going down. Maybe went a little bit to the left, but you know, Dolphin might have gone left first just to get his player lined up, and then he finds the open space. Especially when you're going down the center of the field, because you don't have as much. You know, you got to find. You got to find uh, the defense has a little bit more of an advantage. There, so, well done, great goal. Back to the throw-in. A little over a minute and a half remaining, and a cheeky steal here by Britos. Yeah, avoids the hook coming in from uh, Gonzalez. He's still got Cambiasso to deal with. Oh, well done indeed. Now then, Park Place. Uh, and on the move again, slightly topping that one, Juan Britos. But uh, he's got his teeth stuck in. He wants to get the ball back. This time it's going to be Adolfo. Coming up to the one-minute mark. Nice pass out to the right-hand side where the ball will land uh, perfectly for uh, Alejandro. 
and he will send it back across as uh yeah there he is with the number three gonzalez what a cracking goal wow another power pole play in and we said earlier that when peke gets out in front great shot here by alejandro pretty pass down the center and andre was going for it right there and uh peke just picked uh, juan up rito's kind of pushed him to the side and then let the horsepower take him to the spot and uh fabulous finish on the near side two to two after two we'll be right back Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us here for the uh, 11th game of the Palm Beach Open 2024. The Maltese Falcons in the red shirts up against a park place in the blue shirts. And um, after a goal is uh, first chucker by uh, the Falcons, we had a goal coming in from uh, Hilario Joe. He converted a penalty three and the team had a goal on handicap. Uh, the Falcons, uh, well, they spread those wings in chucker number two, Adolfo Cambiasso and Peque Gonzalez, both picking up a goal each, which has brought them level. But uh, I think this is still uh, far too early to make any kind of predictions because Park Place are shutting down uh, a lot of those offensive plays by the Falcons uh, as soon as they... Uh, raise their heads, so they've been doing a very good job in defense. I haven't really had that many shots on goals because also the Falcons are standing very, very tight. So here we go then. It'll be interesting to see how Chucker 3 pans out. And as Dale was saying, remember to just stay tuned right after this Chucker with those halftime stats, which will reveal all. Here we go then. Uh, we're on our way. Chucker number three, two goals apiece. And uh, that first shot there just going out of bounds. So we will have a change of possession. And it's picked up quickly by Adolfo. And he decides to just launch a rocket uh, up to the front door. Alejandro tried to then send a little nearside backhand to Mia Cambiasa. Didn't quite make the contact that he was hoping for. And that, of course, puts Park Place back in the mode of uh, the the operation of of of, of offense as uh, they were just waiting to pick up that ball britos leaves it for the number two panello a little cut shot back to brit oh unlucky you can see exactly what he was trying to do there 
He timed it just right to get on his stick side, and Alejandro Navizio Estrada will quickly turn things around here for the Falcons. You'll run the far side here, Alejandro. This is what's been going. Uh, yeah, we've been seeing this uh, breakaway from 60 to 60, and uh, the, then the, the defense comes into play. <clears throat> That's where you saw Adolfo's goal. Uh, it was a shot from outside the 60. <clears throat> Peke actually... Uh, worked his end, but here we go. See if they go. Oh, they got Andre on the move right here. He's going to pick this one up inside the six. He got to come from right to left here. Deep neck shot. Oh, buried ball. Bad luck. Yeah, very, very unlucky. Uh, well, I like that there, but they've been bringing him into the game uh, more or less from, from uh, the first chucker. And uh, he's had a couple of good runs. Very unlucky on that play earlier. I believe it was the last chucker where he uh, again picked up the ball nicely, took it downfield, and then just that third shot. Mm. Uh, so unlucky, but uh, good to see him getting involved. Yeah, both both these teams are going to have that extra energy once they get inside the 60. They regroup so well with the rotation, and uh, well, hence the score here in a low-scoring game. Very open game. Not a lot of fouls. We had, we had a few fouls early in the first uh, first chucker. Maltese gave some up to to, uh, to Park Place, but here we go, Adolfo. And, uh, he'll have uh, called off Mia. She was looking for instructions there. Ball comes off. Oops, off the boards. Yeah, that we've seen that a couple of times, especially that Poor. gritty. Yeah, you can see a horse how, how <coughs> agile. Yeah. Just, just kind of sat down and bounced right back up. Alario. Up to the Andre. Yeah, waiting for the ball to come on his stick side. Uh, they might play the advantage here. I think they will. Yeah, they can play the advantage. So you can go back and forth here. Um, you know, you throw it in the air. Alejandro. Picked up by Alejandro back to Adolfo. Yeah. Working very well together. Now then, he's going to take the the route out to the left. And a monster shot. Now then, can Mia pick it up on the near side? Well, she got just the slightest of hooks there from uh, Britos. But now he's up against Gonzalez. Ujoa, nicely red, just tucking in behind. And um, just take a moment or two just to uh, consider where he's going to play this next pass. Or decide to possibly run it. Needs to get past Mia. That's the hard ride off. Everything absolutely textbook. Little shot under the neck. Gonzalez wants to play this ball to himself. Picks it up again on the near side. He's now got uh, Pinello on the hip. And now, now this is clever play. Cut shot coming in from Adolfo. Watch where that ball's going to go. It's going to stay in place. Gonzalez wanted to finish it. Adolfo appealing. Surely I would have been the next man on that line. Well, we've had a whistle. Let's see if the umpires give him the right. Yeah, that, that'll push us to our courtesy change here. And good uh, give and go plays by Peke and Adolfo. Adolfo just lays it down in there. Now he's going to regroup. And Peke pushes him. And that ball sitting right there and not changed. And Lario's going to get caught. On the turn now, remember the uh, Park Place, they used their challenge in the first chucker. They challenged the ball placement. Shot of Adolfo. The um, multi Falcons, they still have their ability to challenge here in the third chucker. Two to two. As they go into the courtesy change after the... Uh, the whistle was there, and uh, we'll see what they work out. It looks like I think they're called. They're, they're, I believe they're on the turn call, but we'll see what they work out. Ball did not change direction no. on on the back shot. No. So the original good shot of Peke Gonzalez here. Peke gets uh, getting uh, opportunities here early. They're using them in the front. He's been the, he's been the sole survivor actually yeah. up there in the front. Mia more on a rotation today. Yeah. We remember Mia was doing a lot of work in the last game. Multi Falcons when they played against uh, Pilot, and in that game, that was uh, game number nine, I believe. Right now they got number ten. Or no, I go sorry, eight. <laughs> I mean we had eleven now, so we've been 
rolling. And uh, so they, they they switched it up a little bit, kind of a different style. And uh, and I, I agree. I apologize. It was actually in the game number five, and um, they play with Mia, Paquito, Nervais, Proto, and Alejandro Vizcarra. Went to eleven nine the game, and uh, I don't know if you remember that he had a. Uh, Kind of changed it up a little bit. I think Lucas James actually got injured, so they put in um, Hagee, Antonio mm -hmm. Hagee played, and uh, they went to a control game that game. I remember. I remember. You, you remember yeah, yeah. Proto, Proto, and and actually Adolfo was coaching, and um, actually the, the the thought process it was pretty good because. They um they had they almost got it back there, yeah. They played they played yeah, they did, yeah. yeah, they played that game at the pilot polo farm. And um, you know, it was a very physical game. Very physical, very a lot of a lot of ride offs and just um and it was it was a, a nine to four at halftime pilot. And then that's when uh Lucas was injured and then they just kept Working it back, and actually, uh, Multi Falcons actually probably won the second half. Just uh, got edged out by a couple goals. Open goal penalty two on the turn to the right. Remember, you can turn the ball to pull the field. You just cannot turn it when you have a player within the danger distance, and it'll be Peke. No problem. No problem at all. And he's very strong to the penalty line. And that puts the Falcons in the lead there for the first time in this game. Yeah, his father. I never asked Danny L, his grandfather, how he was on penalties. But his his father, Mariano, was boy amazing when I played played with him. Uh, and he just was unreal from the uh, anything from 100 in. Yeah, and in the six all 60s, 100. percent So here we go. The uh, Maltese Falcons spreading those wings more and more and soaring up in the sky. They uh, were down by one, didn't score in the first, scored twice to get the equaliser in the second. And now one goal by uh, Peque Gonzalez puts them in the lead and they have a possession. A little under three minutes remain in the first half. Cambiasso drills that one. Now then, can Mia get a finishing touch? Ball just coming or going a little bit short on the near post. Yeah, just just wide, like you said. Another Remington. A couple different ones. Lario it, it seemed up here uh, just under three minutes now. See what kind of set play Ujoa goes with. He's going to run this ball here. Rotation. And a little different rotation. Oh. Almost, I thought me and my uh, go ahead and just steal that ball. <laughs> she had an opportunity. Outlet pass for Joaquin Pinello. Back across the center looking for Andre. He's going to find them. Nice pick up here. Already on the chestnut mare. They override. Pinello, who starts to play, falls it behind, leaves it inside the 30 yard line. And Cambiasso to Cambiasso. Mia to Adolfo. Down the center, looking for Peque. Nobody on the old right away, so easy pick up here by Gonzalez. Out of the pass, you can see a dolphin is checking the field everywhere. His head was on a swivel as he's riding full speed towards the boards there. Gets the ball going down the field. A little short as Mia was going to pick that one up, and they're going to turn around, and here comes Park Place, and they've got Andre on the move. Oh, this is a nice approach shot. Andre inside the 30, look for the finish. And well done, Andre. Nice approach shot. Super finish, and I love this pass here by Lario from a standstill. Yeah, and that, uh, that goal was uh, well overdue. He's uh, been up there in the front. Uh, on so many occasions, uh, I think that ball might have actually just run. Man, that might just run out of steam. Well, he got the very important touch. Yeah. So well done indeed. Andy. Nice, nice pro shot, huh? Very that nice. Always makes you feel good. Does <laughs> when you lay it up, yeah. hit it that well. Yeah. But a very good give go. He played a lot of polo with uh, with Alario. You can see the timing again was perfect, 
And, again, Andre not too far out because Alario's hitting that ball with, from a standstill. Yeah. I mean, not that he can't crush it. I mean, he's, you know, 10 goals and is as strong as Alario is. Change of possession. Cop on the pitch. 3-3. Three to three, Final 30 seconds. First half. Well, a very, very deep ball. Alejandro will do everything he can to clear it. He does. In comes Ujoa. Blocked on the line by Alejandro Navijo Estrada. Great defense here by Alejandro. This is just staying home and staying composed. Can Peque outrun the clock? He might have a few more seconds here. Gonzalez, oh, no, he's going to run out. I was going to say the buzzer beater might come into play. But that is sensational defense by the Secretary of Defense here in the first half. Alejandro Duviza Estrada, well done. <clears throat> Goals, uh, game-saving goal right there by Estrada. Well done, Alejandro. That'll send them off, 3-3, three to three, so this should be a, uh, should be a fun ha second half. We're going to send them off, let them get with their coaches and their teams, get organized, and we'll be back here on CTV Sports. We have our stats coming up. And uh, shots on goal, probably the biggest right there. Look yeah. at that. Um, and multi Falcons actually getting the shots. Throw-ins, too. So a lot of possessions here, which makes sense when you see those those uh, exactly. that many, that many uh, Bolins won. Gives them going to get more possessions, more shots on goal. 3-3. Three three. We'll be back. Stay with us. My name is Nacho Estrada. I'm from Argentina, eight goals. Hilario Figueras, five goals from Argentina. My name is Martin Jauregui. I'm a handicap is six goals. I'm from Argentina. Silvestre Navillo, and I'm from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm Tomás Pérez from Argentina, and I'm six goals. Francisco Spinacci, and I am from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm Juan Bolini, and I'm uh, we go polo player right now, but it could be eight. And uh, I'm from Argentina. I oh, know, actually, now I'm American. No, here is a, it's amazing. The view, the, the fields, everything is uh, super nice. Question is what I don't like about Spain. I think I like everything about Spain. Uh, the weather, the field. Right now in the summer, I would say the best club in the world. Friendship, the, the people, the, the scenery, everything, man. This is my seventh year coming in a row, and I feel like I'm at home right now. So me and the family were around like, like we know the place for a long time, and, and we enjoy the summer a lot. When I come here, uh, winter and summer, I actually like Aspen more in summer. There's more stuff to do. All the mountains around here, like, it's a pretty nice place, and it is nice to play because they are very good horses and I play with a lot of friends. No, I like the polo, the horses and the people. I like to do mountain biking and to go to the lake. Yes, going to the lake, uh, stay here in the barn, everything. It looks amazing, it's my first time here, but uh, all the, the, the things they, they're doing today is, is amazing, so I'm gonna be uh, Enjoy, and I appreciate you to, to inviting me to be here in the, in the season. Christmas in July, uh, kids, are, kids are always looking forward for it. The day they come to Aspen, they know, they, they relate it with Christmas in July. It's an extra that they have here. I like Christmas in July because we like get all together and we receive a lot of presents.
Well, once again, a warm welcome and a very good afternoon. Look at that great shot there of the Park Place uh, farm, the polo farm there. And uh, weather clearing up very nicely here in southern Florida. We've had a little bit of uh, an unfortunate weather spell over the last few days. But uh, things are back on track as uh, you join us for uh, the second half, which is about to start, of the Palm Beach Open 2024. Game number 11, the Maltese Falcons in the red shirts, currently with three goals under their belt, as have Park Place. They're in blue. Let me just quickly run you through who's out there playing in red for the Maltese Falcons. We have, of course, Mia Cambiasso at number one. Then today, Alejandro Navija Estrada, the seven goaler, at number two. At number three, Peque Gonzalez. Nice uh, change in that lineup for the Maltese Falcons. And the maestro himself, Adolfo Cambiasso, playing the number four position. For Park Place, uh, Andre Borodin picking up a cracking goal uh, at the end of that uh, first half. So well done, Andre. He's the number one. At number two, Juan Britos, the nine goaler. At number three, the ten goaler, Hilario Ujoa. And at number four, Joaquin uh, Panello. Remember, Park Place coming into this. Um, into this match with a 25-goal team handicap, so they got a goal and advantage uh, as we started. But uh, as we were saying, Dad and I here uh, in that little break, three goals apiece, still anyone's game. Yeah, I mean, the biggest difference was the uh, Maltese Falcons, which makes sense, winning, well, 80% of the Bolins, and that just gave them more possessions and which gave them gave them more shots on goal. Indeed. But otherwise, the shooting percentages are right around the same. So even though they have the other shot, they have the oppor opportunities <clears throat> at shots. It's uh, it's going to be both teams here in the second half, or just the teams that that finish because both teams, the offense working well, the defense working well, pretty evenly matched, three to three, and clean. It's been and, a yeah, very clean game, very clean, open. Um, you know, it's going to be see who uh, who comes up with some positive uh, plays here and gets the finishes, Yan. And uh, it'll, it'll be a crapshoot at the end. So good luck to both teams. Here we go then. Again, a lot of uh, up and down. And that deflected off uh, Cambiasso, the shot coming from Ujoa. He was looking again for the man with the yellow helmet, Andre Borodin, who I just said scored that amazing goal right at the end of... That last chaka, Cambiasso to Cambiasso, and away we go, Mia. A lot of space here on the left-hand side, but she's got traffic coming in from the right. Panello, there he is, challenging Mia Cambiasso for that right-of-way and for possession. Now also gets a bit of support from Ujoa. In comes uh, the support for Mia, and he's done very well. Well, that's what he'll do all day. He'll steal that ball of you, Alejandro. Novizio Estrada, but uh, barely had he gained possession. It was stolen off him. And uh, this will be a nice little pickup if you can control it for Park Place. Gonzalez having to come back as well. Ujoa having to just jump over those sideboards. The two number fours battling it out there. Uh, Cambiasso and uh, Panella with a bit of a, a bump and a ride off. But now careful because uh, Ujoa, yeah, that's definitely within his range. Uh, intercepted ball did not go through to Britos. Trying to just find a little gap there between Alejandro and uh, Adolfo. Now he needs to allow him to make the play. Adolfo will send that return to sender. Downfield again looking for Gonzalez. Sent back across the field. Who's going to jump on this line first? Well, Mia wanted a piece of it, but uh, we will have a whistle on that. That'll be an interesting one to see again. Yeah, another um, tail shot across the field. Remember the earlier one today we saw yeah. where that, that ball will spin and change directions. So who has a lesser angle there? Remember that ball comes from, it does come from the backside. Yeah. We'll see what they decide to do on it. How they, uh, and uh, yeah, I like this. They're going to go. Favor looked to me like Mia had the lesser angle. I would agree. And it starts out though with Alario. Yeah. But when it hits and then it goes across the field. Correct. And a good read by Mia to jump on that one. So Pelly 5A. Uh dropping it in. Finding Peke. Backed up again by Pinello. And everybody fighting right here in the middle of the field. Uh -huh. Trying to get trying to get that possession in. 
Uh oh, loose ball. Alejandro, will he get on it first? Just beaten to it. He was a bit too far away. Panella was there very quickly, but power play here by the Falcons. <clears throat> you can tell they really want to capitalize on their position where they are at the moment. So a lot of work here in defense for Park Place. Oh, steal from uh, Alejandro, but it didn't last, didn't last very long. Yeah, Alejandro leaning out there. And that's a little change of pushing Alejandro forward here early for for multi Falcons. I want to see what changes we see earlier in the game here. Andre on the move, and Andre's been strong today. Oh, unlucky. Yeah, going to go there, but he's got out in front of Adolfo. Adolfo in the corner. He's got to work it back cross. Well done, Mia. Look at that, helping out Adolfo, giving him room to work. And he will take the pace out a little bit. Now, here's the pass. He's got Gonzalez and Ormia to choose from. And I think the next lady, there she is, uh, coming into your screens now from left to right and uh, trying to get that pony going. Yeah, there's a hook. And he got a piece of it. But now Adolfo coming back. And this is just how you're taught in the polo school. And Adolfo will run this one through. The finishing touch hammers that one through. Cracking play here by the Falcons. Yeah, great uh, Cambiasso play here. It starts way down on the far end as uh, Adolfo turns the ball. And Mia, working very hard, frees up her dad, gets, gets the man on her hip. Then she goes forward, which I love. He gives it back to her. And then she, she works it down over center. And again, even though she ends up getting hooked or she leaves it behind right after she gets over center, gives Adolfo time to get back in line. And then Adolfo takes it in and gets the finish. Yeah. So, good. I mean, it's great, good polo. Good polo indeed. So, for the second time, then the Falcons take the lead. Remember, they were up by three goals to two until Andre Borodin scored that equalizer right at the end of that uh, third chucker. So... Adolfo putting the score in his favor. Four goals to three. Little courtesy change. Just a little under three minutes remain here in Chucker number four. So we'll see uh, who strikes next. It's going to be like that, I think, going back for you. See, you're going to see uh, attack, 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 you know? And uh, like I said, which teams have the higher percentages at the end are going to be going to be where it works, Jan, because he um, said both teams <clears throat> playing playing very well. One goal difference, first uh, first lead of the day for Maltese Falcons. Two to zero after the first, they were down. Two to two, they tied it back up in the second. Went to halftime three to three. And they take their first lead here in the fourth. Shot of Mia. Little chestnut, bald face chestnut merit here. And uh, as we said earlier, two <clears throat> two different teams here for the World Polo League. Uh, actually, shouldn't say teams. I should say players for the teams. Yep. For, for multi Falcons and Park Plays. And uh, I, I we have not seen uh, from both teams. I don't think we've seen all the different uh, the bag of tricks as we say. We're going to see more out of both these teams. We got everybody back on, and away we go. Uh, did. We'll leave this one for the number four, Pinello. Ball will just jump over, so a little bit unlucky there. Change of possession. It's going to go in favor of the Falcons. And uh, Adolfo, very nice-looking pony he's riding there. A little uh, flat and low, looking for Mia. And, uh, yeah, she gets right into it, but that might have been a little bit overzealous there from, uh, from Mia, but... She's tough. Yeah, you said it. And she, she she doesn't waste any time getting right back in it. Comes right there, and that's gonna be just coming in coming in from behind. Needs to come from the side a little more. Can make that play. Just come from the side. They'll drop it for a penalty five A. Went for the hook first. And uh they'll drop it right there. So Ujoa. Pretty far back here. I wouldn't be surprised you'll see a control play. Yeah, he's going to go for the control play. So, away we go. Left behind. In comes Britos. 
up to the number four, Pinello. He runs into a, a wall of red shirts there. Little shot under then, or well, over to the left hand side again for Juan Britos. And they're getting closer and closer. That one will be taken by Ujoa. Trying to outrun Adolfo Cambiasso. Little chip shot back to Ujoa. The near side backhand, unlucky. Didn't just not get enough power on that shot. Wanted to open his shoulders just a little bit more, but uh, I do like the play. Very nice play here by Park Place. Yeah, they come in they, and now they add, they added an extra dimension where we were talking about Alejandro coming up in the game. Now you yeah, have Pinello involved, and that's where you get the give and go inside the 60. Turn around and take it here, though, by multi-Falcons. Mia. It's got to. A little unlucky there. Goes back. Look at that. Very active. Doesn't waste any time. Goes straight back in defense. So let's see what Park Place can pull out here. They have uh, a little over a minute remaining to get the equalizer. They did it at the end of the third. Can they do it again at the end of the fourth? Very deep ball, but uh, Gonzalez, Beckett will get there just before... Panello, and he will leave this one for AC. He's got plenty of time. Out of room, huh? Yeah, I was going to say, plenty of time. You be and careful. A lot of... Oh, there's one. I figured he'd want to be coming in there, but yeah, be careful. They give the Dolphin too much space there, Yan, and he's going to work it to center, and then that gives, their, that gives them their offensive attack. It's going to go ahead and uh, do they? Is there still time? Let's see. We might still have time here. Check this outlet pass on the far side. Ball comes downfield right there. And silly. Moving yeah. back yeah, toward. Unfortunate and, yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, unfortunate. You're moving back toward the ball. But, again, also Peke not deviating from his line. Yeah. But we'll see what they, uh, what they decide to do here, whether they decide to place his ball. Remember, both teams have – the ability to challenge once again. Each team has a new challenge for the second half. 34 seconds, so that was just before the warning horn. And they'll put Pecky back on the line, and I believe he's 100%, right? Yeah, one for one. Pecky, penalty three in the third shocker. Now a penalty three once again. No mistake. Gonzalez. No mistake. So, as you said, 100% from the line, and that will bring us to the end of the fourth chakra. So, the Falcons extending their lead. Let's see what happens when we come back. Stay with us. When I founded the Taqueria 48 years ago, the goal was to service polo players field side and carry a complete line of polo equipment. Since those early days, we now carry everything for the horse and rider. Anything goes on or near a horse, you're likely to find here in our store. But we still have polo equipment made by polo players for polo players.
Okay, welcome back, everybody. As we are here in our uh, fit trucker, Palm Beach Open, and a very good shot here of the Park Place team. Looks like uh, Nacho. He just shot right yep. there. Yeah. And Nacho, uh, of course, Nacho plays at the Aspen Valley Polo Club, playing in the World Polo League, and uh, he enjoys the coaching. Mm -hmm. Coaches. Um, Coaches in the o o Argentine Open, and uh, I was actually talking to him about that about a, a couple weeks ago. And uh, yeah, he uh, really enjoys the uh, the coaching, which is such a huge part of the game these days. And uh, we see so many different players coaching, coaching players. And Adolfo also likes to coach. We saw, remember, we saw the Park Place team. When they played, uh, what was that team? They played one of one of their games that they played. They, yep. Yeah, when they played against Casablanca, yeah. When they played against Casablanca, they had, yeah, they 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 had and they had they had them all. They had them all actually there. Also, they were playing, but they had totally played with Matias Gonzalez and. Uh, Joaquin Pinello, Cody Ellis, and then had they had a they had Nacho and Lario and uh, Brito's coaching. So they had a whole, whole whole line of coaches. Here we go. Back to action. Five three again. And uh, the man with the number two and the green helmet, Juan Britos. Nine a goal up. Very, very strong. Look at that. Another perfect pass out to the right hand side. Now, will he go for the direct shot or will he work it? I think he's gonna try and work it, but uh, to get past Alejandro Navizio Estrada is no easy feat by any stretch of the imagination. Back to Britos. Round the outside. Can he beat Adolfo? Britos. What a cracking goal there by the uh, number two. So this is what you want to do. Down by two. So you want to win the goals. Multi-scoring two goals in the fourth chucker. So Juan Britos just decides to take it all by himself and uh, pick up a quick goal here early in the fifth. So they're coming out fighting, but as you said, Dale, this is going to be, uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to see more than maybe one or two goals max uh, between these two teams. Uh, Adolfo with a nice deep ball down looking for Mia, but she will have to leave it for Gonzalez. Gonzalez slightly overshot that one. Alejandro coming in, runs into some traffic. Adolfo, yeah, well, he'll be appealing all day long. Now then, a lot happened there just now. Uh, I think there was a, a question of maybe letting the advantage play. Let's have another look at this one, Dale. Okay, Peke. Going to break to the inside. Mia's hooked up there with Alario. Yeah. Then they come together. And you know, one player coming from right, ducking and diving, bobbing and weaving. Everybody bounced around. A lot to talk about here. <laughs> so, and uh, well, you've got you've had the opportunity to see it three times. Now, now for you've seen it four times, Jan. <laughs> have you figured out what's going on yet? Well, <laughs> I have, I have, and I'm going by by what a very good friend of mine taught me not that long ago. I mean, I did know, but he just reiterated: <laughs> when you have a a multiple number of fouls or occurrences, go back to the very first foul, and that's uh, yeah. what I'm currently yeah. sticking with. Well said, very well said. Now, now you, now you, you, you now they'll they'll have to go back and and see, uh, you know, when, when you go back to those, the beginning, the first foul, then you, then you got to break down which way it goes. Like, uh, you know, we had a lot of, a lot of plays going on there. There was a play looked like uh, early on where one player was clearing out. Mia was taking out a player. Pecky went to the inside. Then Alejandro leaves the ball for Dolfo. And then you have contact there. But who's right or wrong there? Um, and then you know, then they, they then you add up the next one and next one. So, but uh, well done. Let's see what they decide to do here. It looks like uh, I think it was from the spot. And we'll check with our our IRO just to uh, see. 
it looked like we had some contact down the side early on. But it's going to be Peque from the line. He's already two for two. Gonzalez. Whoa, that's the way you want to hit him, Peque. Now he'll be ready for 60 if uh, they need him for the 60. Yep. Like, like you said, you did your good well call, well said by you. And you have like three or four fouls going on there. You go back to the first one. Then you got to figure out exactly, though, which player did create the danger first. Uh, we had a blocking foul early, and then you had a number of those fouls. You said crossing here, that. So, Opie Gold Pellet 2, well done. Great job by the by the umpire team, as I said, and praise them this year on their timing. And look at this. True breakaway, Alario. Oh, you can see Alario grabbing his helmet. Yeah. He knew he overhit it. Yeah. He didn't even swing at that ball. No, no he just I mean, looked at man, it. Man, bad luck, Alario. I mean, I mean, he didn't even hit, he didn't even hit it. No. He literally just showed you how far thing that ball will go. So uh, that's a huge bullet dodged by the Maltese Falcons here. Dolphin knows it. He's going to be trying to. They're going to try to capitalize on this because this becomes here comes that three goal swing in. It would have been within one, and now you have an opportunity at the score here and go up by three. So this is a huge opportunity for Maltese Falcons. Bad luck there, Mia. Yeah, just yeah, so. and she was gonna be on second. She wanted to go to goal there, and <laughs> she said, "I'm off." And I like how Dolpha went to her quickly, because you got the two goal lead here, and you dodged a bullet. So let's go for it, and just bad luck, bad luck. So Park Place get a second chance here to uh, bring them within one a goal of the six already scored by the Falcons, Alejandro. Navisha Australia, he'll just, uh, Leo, look, he's got uh, Cambiasso and Cambiasso behind him. Uh, runs into a bit of traffic, yeah, well, advantage being given here, and Alejandro will take it across into the open space. Gonzalez coming in with him, and he'll be eyeing up uh, Britos there. You see him putting him uh, in his place, Cambiasso. Nice long ball, a little bit short and too far out to the right-hand side. For Mia, she was going into the danger zone. Now then, can Gonzalez feed her that ball? Adolfo tucks behind. The under the neck shot there was the attempt. And that is why Adolfo tucked in behind to pick it up now. Can he drop one on the green? Well, he's going to definitely try. And that might even go itself. Just in front of that goal mouth. And again, not on her stick side. Nothing Mia could have done there. Yeah. He's going for the goal there, actually. I Just think so. Off. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Just he, he didn't have much goal to shoot at. As you can see him going for that far post. Give me a good shot here of Alario. And uh Ujor. That's actually uh his brother right there. So um two goal difference again. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a big uh, 304 here in the fifth. This can change the game. They like said if uh, if Maltese Falcons shut Park Place down here, when we, we return, we will have a knock-in. So it's going to go possession in favor of Park Place, and they're definitely going to want to uh, to have a positive possession. You know what Dolfo's going to be doing. He's going to try to shut it down. They're going to want to win this one. It'd be great to be able to get get another goal here and go into the six chucker up by three. Yeah. And it gives you that little breathing room where you can take some chances, you know, maybe, uh, you know, go for it a little bit. Maybe take risk risk a little more for the reward, risk-reward. Um, Beautiful-looking pony here, yeah. Dolfo Cambiasso. Nandofina, breeding operation. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be, this is an in interesting area right now. A little bit longer on the curse change here. We have one team at the end. We've had a couple times today. We have Park Place on the north end, and uh, we have the Multi Falcons on the south end. It does happen sometimes. We have a, each team is split up in different areas of the field. And, of course, that field... To any of our new viewers, 300 by 160 yards wide, nine footballs. 
I was uh, we got rained out the other day. I was talking with some people that, that were coming out to pull you in, and they they could not imagine that a pole field you could put nine football or soccer fields in the area one pole field. Mm. But of course, those four legged athletes can co- go coast to coast under ten. This is a big possession right now. Buitos. So can a park place pick up that much needed goal, or will the Falcons, as you said, Dale? Spread those wings and spread that cushion to, uh, oh, a bit of, of a bigger di- a gap here. Nicely turned. Mia Cambiaso, yeah, but uh, straight away on it. Britos, I beg your pardon, Ulloa. Britos is out on his left. And he's going to play this one out to the right-hand side. And uh, there he is with the number four, Joaquin Panello. Oh. Oh, hold on there, Joaquin. I think he's going to be all right. Yeah, I think a man that got tangled in the uh, in the tack there. In his reins? Yeah, and basically, you know, pulled the whole the, the whole thing off. He got up on the handlebars, kind of just nice soft landing. Didn't go down real hard, so he's okay. We'll take a little time just to make sure that he's uh, he's going to be all right. Audi Travieso. Well. As soon as you hear the word now, Audi, our afternoon game today, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, what are you thinking? What do you what are you thinking about this uh, Audi coming in? Well, What's Audi, that, where's Audi at now? We two and zero, they're two and zero. Two and zero, that's right. Audi. So what, Travieso? Two and zero, right? Yeah. So it'll be a huge game. I think it's going to be a very big game. Yeah. And, to, uh, uh, and they're both in the uh, bracket of uh, bracket of four. And not only that, Dale, for those viewers out there this afternoon, just to uh, whet your appetite, we have three 10-goalers on the pitch this afternoon in that game, Audi versus Travieso. Yeah, that's going to be fun to watch. Here we go. Back to the action. Center field hit. Stolen away by Alario. Up to the boards. Waits for the, the rebound. Still Ujoa. He's got uh, three Falcon... Defenders there trying to challenge him. Gonzalez, Alejandro, Adolfo. And, yeah, eventually the umpires had to put a pull the handbrake on that one. Looks like Park Place going to work this one down. Let's see. Alario. He just comes over, picks up Alejandro. And right there. <clears throat> you got to be careful. Alejandro pushing in. <clears throat> kind of cuts him off. Cuts Brito's off. Now they both have challenges, both teams. And um, eh, they'll probably save this one. Going to be tight here going down to the end. But you see how Alejandro is being ridden off by Juan Britos. And then, and also there, uh, with Juan overlapped, then Alejandro can't make the hook. And it nearly pushed him into a sandwich. Yeah, they put his sandwich there. Yeah, he was actually sandwiching Juan. Britos in the middle. But also, you, because they're overlapped, you can't make the hook. Yeah. Yeah. So, man, there's not much plate, not much room to work there. They're on the board. So, but this is that opportunity we're talking about. It either goes three goals for Maltese Falcons or Ujoa is going to have an opportunity to get it with one. And this is what Alario wanted. He wanted to be able to uh, get a goal or get on the penalty line. Beautiful looking dark bay pony here, Ujoa, with the 60 yard penalty four. He hit it well? No. Off to the side? Yeah. Well, another big, big dollar, uh, dollar, bullet dodged here by uh, the Maltese Falcons. And uh, I'm sure Park Place and Hilari will not be happy missing such a big opportunity. Now then, can they still capitalize? A minute and a half remain here in the fifth chucker. Gonzalez. Plays it down the boards. Nice pass. Picked up nicely, beautifully even, by Mia Cambia. So she gets uh, Britos in for a challenge. Gonzalez needs to be careful. Needs to allow the number two in blue to make that play. Ujoa. Hammers that one back down. And look, there he is. And he's very, very good on those first touches. This one not quite so good as he would have liked. But uh, there is, of course, that young man with the number four, Panello. 
Panana back to Ojoa. Ojoa opens those shoulders. Where's that ball going to go? Ooh. Got a hold of it. But off to the side once again. And this is uh, now Dolphin should probably manage the clock here. I would think. Yeah, he's going to manage the clock, and that's going to give him possession. So up by two, possession of the ball. Maltese Falcons in a in a nice uh, place to start six charker. So see if Park Place can uh, can uh, get these uh, couple goals back. Stay with us. We'll be back six charker. Another great season. We had a blast this year. Great fields again. They keep getting better and better. And we got lucky with the rain this year and uh, had a lot of fun polo. There's nothing better than being out here in Aspen, playing with these great people. Amazing views every day. I mean, how could you ask for more? Best part about being out here in Aspen for the polo is the fields, the community, Melissa and Mark, the great competition and uh, and the amazing horses and how the horses enjoy being out here. I love the town, I love the valley, I love also spending time here in Carvondale. Um, so I just love this place in general. I have a lot of friends. I've made lots of friends over the years. The Gansis has have created a spectacular place here uh, that has become a really important summer destination for polo in America. Aspen, I love it best. Our family's around, a ton of horses, a ton of golf, and a lot of fun polo, so. All right, here we go, everybody. Good shot of the Maltese Falcons. And thank everyone for joining us here on CTV Sports, Grand Champions Polo Club. And of course, from the Park Place Polo Farm today for the World Polo League. Continuing action. We're uh, we'll, we're going to break the action after this game. Our our uh, crew, CTV Sports, uh, CTV Sports crew will head over to Field Three. So if you are in town, uh, we will be uh, playing our second game day from Field Three from the Grand Champions Polo Club. So you can head over there and watch that. We'll give our give our team. A videographers out there to get a chance to get over to field three and then we'll we'll, uh, we'll start our second uh, second game of the day here but here we go control will go to Maltese Falcon Jan to start off the six trucker so now the big question is how will Adolfo have instructed his uh, his teammates Mia Peke and of course Alejandro how does he want to play this uh, six and final chucker Will it be more offensively minded or more defensively minded? Park Place really only have the one choice, which is to be a lot more offensively minded. They are down by two goals. Had a couple of huge opportunities in that last chucker, which they did not, which they did not, yeah, convert. So I'm pretty sure they're going to have to risk it a little bit. And uh, you never just know. You might just find. A little two-point conversion coming your way. We haven't seen one since uh, Tocalino scored one. And that uh, seems such a long time ago. We've had a lot of players definitely have a crack at it. But uh, so far, he is the only one. And this could be the kind of break that Park Place need here at the top of Tucker number six. 
borrowed in just too far out on the right to tuck in behind. And um, well, bad luck there. Yeah. I was going to say Adolfo was going to. Yeah, where Keen was off to the races. Oh, and it uh, looks oh, like man. Alejandro might have had a little knock there. That hit Alejandro hard. Man. Hope he's okay here. So we're gonna we're gonna uh man, that was, we'll we'll make sure Alejandro's okay here. So um stay with us here as we are going to make sure Alejandro needs Estrada. Okay, very early here in the six chucker. Six oh six left. And I'm not sure if Alejandro we got hit in hand. No, on his, when, th on his on thigh. On the side. Yeah. Get on the side. They came together with Juan Britos. And um, he's a tough guy, so doesn't. Uh, but just uh, just stay with us here. We're going to go to a injury timeout. Six to four. Uh, Multi-Falcons. Two-goal lead. And uh, we'll be right back here on CTV Sports. Another great season. We had a blast this year. Great fields again. They keep getting better and better. And we got lucky with the rain this year and uh, had a lot of fun polo. There's nothing better than being out here now. All right, welcome back, everybody. Quickly, and an uh, applause for Alejandro. He's just trying to, that he is okay. It, kind of a weird little play, actually. Um, it wasn't when Juan Britos and him came together, but there was a player on the outside. Yeah. And his horse's head... Kind of got uh, uh, Alejandro in ribs, but he's okay back in the saddle. So they're going to continue here. They'll keep an eye on Laro, I mean uh, Alejandro, of course. And here we go, 5:45 on the break. And look at this! What a great run here by Joaquin Panello. Panello on the approach now. He's got uh, Alejandro behind him. Panello, Panello. There you go. Yeah, and that's what he. He. I know he was uh, chomping at the bit. No pun, pun intended. When he uh, had that one breakaway in the yeah. fifth, yeah, and uh, because he's been doing a lot of work on on the defensive side, but he hasn't had the opportunity to get some runs, and now you get going here, and that's just um, a very high level finish. Remember, always finish to the far post. Great shot. So, one goal in it, Dale. Well, we kind of both anticipated it wasn't going to be more than one or two goals, so we are back to just the one goal. But uh, the Falcons have won the throw in. Remember. Full time stats, full match stats will coming will be coming on your screen after this uh, sixth and final chucker as well. Now then, has that changed the game plan of the Falcons? I'm sure Senor Cambiaso will have a plan B. Oh, that's a nice ball, and it nearly came through to Mia Cambiaso. A little deflection here, and that could be an open invitation for Juan Britos to take the ball downfield. But those Falcons. Uh, again, working so well. Alejandro on the boards, looking for a little gap to get out of that uh, melee of players. Still Alejandro, he's got Panello in front of him, Ushoa behind him, but he's still got the ball. He'll leave that now for Gonzalez. And he knew that he had, uh, well, either or, but it was definitely a Cambiasso behind him, Mia. 
Getting right back into it. Adolfo appealing. Looked like there was enough of an angle there for uh, the non-call. And uh, Alejandro goes for it and puts that ball over the back line. Yeah, let them play. Let them play. Here, one goal difference. That's going to send us to our final courtesy change. Indeed. Of the, of the day. Yeah. Or of, of this game. Actually, the six shucker. And... Um, here come the Machinas. Here they do. Yep. So should be seeing some fascinating uh, high-level ponies here once again. A beautiful shot of Park Place, Portal Farm there. Stables in the back, on the back side, actually on the far west side of the property. And uh, a couple different polo fields. And, of course, as they all on the far side there, as I said, that's uh, Tonkawa, Jeff Hilderman. And the uh, plays at the Aspen Valley Polo Club in the summer as uh, the High Mesa. They also, uh, oh, yeah, there's Snowmass. He has a polo farm also and he also played at the Astro Valley Polo Club if you're interested in playing polo in the summer good shot of Andre you can uh, of course get all your information AspenValleyPoloClub.com and uh, GCPolo.com down here at the Grand Champion Polo Club also remember all of our platforms so you can uh, download the app for Grand Champion Polo Club and CTV Sports TV. Watch uh, people watching the games that are on a number of different platforms. You all watch watch on the YouTube platforms, and uh, you know make sure if you're interested in playing the poll, July, August, into September, based on scheduling. You can check with our general manager, general manager Kale Newman, and our director of operations for the poll school. And a lot of the polo playing as a pro player, also Juan Bellini. Here we go. Everybody back quick. And here we go with 3.30 on the clock. And that's a very nice ball out to the side. Yeah, Ujo, a bigger partner. And it was Ujo, just beaten there by Cambiasso. Nicely turned around and picked up by Alejandro. He's going to leave that for Adolfo. And he's going to send it back to uh, Alejandro. Now, he is also within range. He knew he had a man coming down the line, Pinello there, and he steals him, or steals the ball off him. Down the boards they go once again. This time it will be Ujoa. Uh, he needs a support there from Britos. Britos back to Ujoa. That's what I thought was going to happen now. Then out to the left-hand side. This for the equaliser. Well, and what a great defensive play there by Adolfo, putting a stick down just at the right moment. You could tell he was definitely going to go for the shot on goal. And now then, can Peque Gonzalez put or restore that two-goal advantage here for the Maltese Falcons? Let's have a look at the clock. Two and a half minutes remain. Dale, what do you say? Oh, back and forward, back and forward. Let them play. They're going to let them play. And it's going to be up in the air here all the way down the end, Yan, yeah, as it gets picked up. Loose ball turned around and controlled by Pinello. He was slowed up just a bit by Gonzalez, Peque. Now, Joaquin trying to get the ball back to Alario. And why not? Give it to the 10 goaler. Ujoa. Oh, give and go. Mia's going to have some room to work here on the Bay Pony. Andre going back. Mia going to go ahead and slam on the break. Oh, good read here by Mia Cambiaso on the delay play. Now look for the finish on the offside. Turned around, taken out by Pinello. Unlucky, but uh, again, once she gets her teeth in, you know, you uh, you know she's uh, not going to give up uh, until she's tried everything. And again, the focus there by Mia Cambiasa staying uh, on that play. Uh, just very unlucky. It would have uh, been nice for her if she would have picked up that goal. Yeah, I don't know. Good to read, as you said, yeah. The, shut on the slam on the break. Mary, you got to know when you're beat, right? Yep. All good players knowing their beat. Look at this. Back on the give and go. Now looking for boarding, and, and he's going to shoot one here. Can he keep that ball in play? And that ball is going to go off the field, and the clock goes tick, tick, tick. And you see Alario right there looking for a horse. 
looking for a change. And uh, I don't know if you're going to get a time out here or not. Um, it looks like uh, they are going to give a time out for one of the four-legged athletes. And I think everyone's going to take advantage of this. And uh, you might as well. So there's Mia. She's going to go down. She's going to change. Adolfo shot right off to the side and changed. Um, they had a timeout for Park Place. And uh, so the multi-Falcons are going to take advantage of it, and they might as well because uh, they have the horses there. You got a minute one, a minute uh, and a second left. Opportunity here. You have possession of the ball. And um, so now this is uh, the ball's in their court, as you can say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very much so. But as you know, Dale, a minute, a lot can happen in a minute. So um, let's see. The Falcons would, of course. <clears throat> I don't think you want to lose to give. No. The, I don't think you want to give possession up here. So we'll see what Adolfo decides to do. And uh, talking this one out with Peke. So, but I would think that he's going to try to keep the, the possession here and uh, at least to get it down. We'll see. Here comes number four. They're going to put the pressure on him, Adolfo. Out to the left-hand side. Uh, Gonzalez, good first touch. Alejandro, uh, he's going to leave it for Gonzalez. He's on a run and on a flyer. Look at that pony go. In comes the collision and the ride off. But uh, Gonzalez staying with the man, with the play. And, of course, finds himself now deep in the half of Park Place. Are they going to run out of time, Dale, here? That is the big question. Once again, Ujoa. Out to the right-hand side, still. Hilario. Behind, left behind, four. Britos. Out to the left-hand side. Yeah, they got to take a shot. And can he finish it? Ujoa. Well, he can, do. Wow, look at that. And that's where the possession comes into play, Yan, as I was telling you. You lose possession. Did not need the buzzer beater. But had time, and I thought Peckett was going to take it all the way to the hoop. And then they flipped the coin there and got the ball back. And look at this, six to six in the six. We got a set of sixes, so we're going to send everybody off and get some fresh ponies. And we'll be back for our seventh chucker, sudden death overtime, first goal. I'll win. So stay with us here. We'll be back. CTV Sports. My name is Nacho Estrada. I'm from Argentina. Eight goals. Hilario Figueras, five goals from Argentina. My name is Martin Jauregui. Um, my handicap is six goals. I'm from Argentina. And I'm from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm Tomás Pérez from Argentina, and I'm six goals. Francisco Spinacci, and I am from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm Juan Bolini, and I'm a three goal polo player right now, but it could be eight. And uh, I'm from Argentina. I oh, know, actually, now I'm American. No, here is a, it's amazing the view, the, the fields. Everything is uh, super nice. Question is what I don't like about it. I think I like everything about it. Uh, the weather, the feel. Right now in the summer, I would say it's the best club in the world. Friendship, the, the people, the, the scenery, everything. Uh, this is my seventh year coming in a row and I feel like I'm at home right now. So me and the family were around like, like we know the place for a long time and and we enjoy the summer a lot. When I come here, uh, winter and summer, I actually like Aspen more in summer. There's more stuff to do. All the mountains around here, like, it's a pretty nice place. And it is nice to play because they are very good horses and I play with a lot of friends. No, I like the polo, the horses, 
and the people. I like to do mountain biking and to go to the lake. Yes, going to the lake, uh, stay here in the barn, everything. It looks amazing, it's my first time here, but uh, all the, the, the things they, they're doing today is, is amazing. So I'm gonna be uh, enjoy, and I appreciate to, to inviting me to be here in the, in the season. Christmas in July, uh, kids are kids are always looking forward for it. The day they come to Aspen, they know they they related with Christmas in July. It's an extra that they have here. I like Christmas in July because we like get all together and we receive a lot of presents.
All right, here we go. Beautiful aerial shot there of Park Place Polo Farm. And we are preparing for sudden death overtime, trucker number seven. And it's been flying around the studio here. And uh, what are your thoughts here, Yan, on the... Well, it was two to zero after the first park place. Two to two af- after the second. Three to three at halftime, and um, one goal in handicap given to Park Place. S- so very tight game in the first half. Then five to three, multi Falcons. They they took the lead and they held the lead, and then they uh, and then they got this right here seven seven. So off we go. Well, to answer your question, Dale, I think uh, first of all, it's been uh, it's been a cracking game of polo here from both teams. We've seen some we've seen some amazing plays, uh, and I'd like to compliment all eight players on, uh, yeah, not letting. I not, answer, it's answer the question here. Uh, I, I, I'm, go, I'm getting to it. I'm just trying to be diplomatic. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got you, diplomat. Here we go. What do you got? We got a foul on the play. But what do you got to win in this overtime, Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a feel. It's just a feeling. Okay. It's just a feeling that the Blues might nick it. Okay. I, I'm gonna go to red. Okay. Penalty five A, and away we go. Got both sides of the corner. Okay. Got about fifty fifty in the studio today. Very tight game, right? Yeah, yeah. Anybody's game. Here we go. On the move. Picked up by Hilario. And Hilario will clear it in front of his own goal mouth. Now will he have the inclination of maybe running this one himself? He's got uh, a lot of red shirts coming in to challenge the Tangola, Alejandro uh, Mia Cambiasso, but uh, he's not called Hilario 10 goals for nothing. Here we go. Then look how he finds his way through that traffic. Round the outside he goes. Borodin doing a very good job also to allow him to make the play. Sends it out to the left-hand side, but he's got to pick it up from, or he's going to have to deal with the pickup there, I should have said, by Adolfo Cambiasso beating the number four, Joaquin Panello. Panello comes in, steals it back. No whistle on the play, despite the appeal there by Adolfo. Now then, Juan Britos uh, gets that ball over that halfway line. Picked up again by the Tangola. Checks, cuts in. El Capitan. He's getting closer and closer. Yeah, you could see he was a little bit hesitant there. You could feel it's itching there. He wants to open those shoulders, get a shot off to goal. Yeah. We hear it. I was going to keep saying, here it comes. Sends it out to Britos. Britos maybe on the near side, or will he pick it up on his stick side? Shot on goal. Wide. Oh. Oh, just wide. Not came coming. Well, this is this was this was <laughs> what my hunch was based on. Keep being diplomat. No more diplomat. <laughs> All right, here comes the mat. I got a run coming for Pekka Gonzalez on the far side. He's got Mia out in front here. This is going to be a true breakaway. Mia Cambiasso, she's got Tom. Andre's going to go back. Mia gets a piece of it. Ooh, bad luck there again. So both teams having a, ooh, a little rub there. And we'll get a whistle. And that'll stop the clock. Ooh. Wow. Now. Let's have a look at this again. She slightly topped it. Yeah, let's yeah. see what happens here. Picked up by the number four. Yeah. There. There what? Was the touch. There what? The rub. All right, there what? The what? <laughs> there Not was. being the diplomat again? <laughs> <laughs> there, there what on the, on, the, on the rub? There was, exactly. Okay, who's it against? It's against red. It's against red? Okay. And it's four you wanna, blue. You want to, you want to, you want to, you want to, you want to get, you want to check, you want to. Yeah, you know, what you are you being diplomatic now? You want to what? You want to what? You want to what? I I think it's against the other person. I think it's against okay. The blue. A cup of coffee and two donuts. I think it's against the blue. You think it's against the blue? Yeah. And I think it's against the red. Yeah. Okay. And they're gonna challenge it. Mm-hmm. We should get challenges to have one per half as well. <laughs> okay. We will see. We will see. So what, what's the wage? A cup of coffee and two donuts. That's fine. Okay. Well, why, why do you have it against the red? Because he already had the line, and then he came and he, he, he just blocked him slightly. 
He didn't allow him to. He didn't clear out the way quick enough. Okay. And, and, what, and why do you have it against the blue? Because I don't think he gave him time to get out, get out of the way. Is that what you think? I think. Okay. I think. I don't think he gave him time to get out of the way. All right. Okay. Because my man can't just disappear. But well, I, we'll I, see. We'll see. You never know. They're going to challenge it. So they got to check it and see. Could go either way. <laughs> you you tried to sneak out of that one. Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. no, no, I didn't. <laughs> there uh, it is right uh, there. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. You know, we'll see. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. So, so you got to you got to you got to break it down. So we'll see because you remember you got two guys coming together on a play, and so it's it's not an not an easy easy call, you know, because like you said. So and uh, so, what was your what was your thought process again on that, Tommy? My thought process was that Blue had the line, had the right of way, and got slightly blocked in order to make the play. Or okay, just call it a blocking foul. So there you go. So we just had we had a challenge, and it came to be offsetting penalties. Well, then we both win. <laughs> <laughs> we all win, which, which makes sense because yeah. exactly what we said yeah. is true. And so you had one player riding back like mine, yeah. but then you had the red player didn't clear the yeah. right way. Yeah. See, the red player's got to clear yeah. the right true. way. So, but, you know, but you know what, Dale? I'll still buy you that coffee and okay. those donuts. But there you go. So offsetting penalties, so everything, everything's everything clean there. They're going to go to the bowling, and away we go. So on the move, the Blues have it. Let's see if they can make their second attack count. That's another deep ball. Andre borrowed in. He's going to try and pick this one up on the near side. Yeah, but he might just have been caught slightly. Fall over, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad luck. Falling across the right yeah. away. Yeah. Afterwards. That window, remember, at this level of polo yeah, is... Dolphin closes it quickly, huh? Yeah. That's the biggest thing here. Dolphin's going to close this window. Yeah, right And, there. He, and then you see Andre cut. If Andre stays on his near side there, he'll be okay. So you got to go for it. Nice try, Andre. You know, he just kind of fell across. So penalty 5A, Adolfo. And look at this. We're two, two minutes in. Yeah. yeah. And this is the second attack now by the Falcons. Looking for an open man, and they're going to find Mia, open lady. And Mia, back to the inside. Well done, Mia. She's got Alejandro right there. No, Mia's going to have an opportunity now. Mia, shadow goal. That ball's got eyes. Yes, and the high flag for Mia Cambiasso. Well done, Dale. And well done, Mia. What a finish by Mia Cambiasso. But both teams, I mean, just a spectacular game. Uh, I got to give it up for both these teams. Mia, uh, Brito's keeping an eye on Adolfo there. Mia's going to try to hit to Alejandro there. Actually, it's a miss hit. And that's what, then she just ch stays, stays tranquilo and gets a great finish. Ian, any final words? Congratulations. Welcome, well done. And I'm delighted that Mia Cambiasa was the one who got the golden goal. Here we go then, your final match stats. Yeah, pretty close across the board there, Ian. And uh, what a game, Ian. Back and forth. Once again, we're going to thank Park Place and uh, Park Place. Pull the farm up for Ian Eric Frank. I'm Dale Schwetz. I speak for everyone here at CTV Sports where I say thank you. For making us the leaders of polo broadcasting. And always remember here at CTV Sports, we love the polo.